At the end of World War II, everything in art and art history would change forever. The steady path of growth and change in art would now take a dark turn. This turn to eventually lead into what we know now as postmodern or contemporary art, which never would have happened without the power shift that occurred in the world at the end of the war. To note something, the reason why art is so important to look at is that it's the representation of a broader culture and the ideas that people want to put forth or make statements about. By looking at art, we can understand more about what's happening in a certain country or group of people. Anyway, back to our discussion of World War II. It's April 1945, the Soviets ransacked Berlin, the Nazis lost, the US came in and liberated the camps. Of course, during the war, the US President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and the UK leader Churchill knew about the camps. There were murmurs of what they were like, but once the war ended and the prisoners freed, the rumors about the camps spread like wildfire. What was the death toll? What were the conditions like? With the Nazis all either dead, on trial, or somewhere between Germany and Argentina, they had no say in the public eye what the camps were like. So naturally, the Jews that survived told their story, and their story spread. Soon, everyone knew what had happened. This brings us to Theodore Adorno, whose words would shift the direction of art immensely through his writings, particularly those on German culture. Theodore W. Adorno, born in Frankfurt as Theodore Ludwig Weissengrund, his mother had the name Adorno. She was a Catholic from Corsica. His father was an assimilated Jew who converted to Protestantism. When Theodore applied for U.S. citizenship, his name was changed to Theodore W. Adorno. Very influential as a German philosopher, he wrote in 1949 that, quote, to write poetry after Auschwitz is barbaric. He asks his readers what German culture could really be after the Holocaust. His idea was that art or poetry was beautiful and created to evoke feelings, yet the only emotion they should feel is that of sadness, despair, depression, defeat, etc. He wrote in his essay, Commitment, about the artist's paradox where they wanted to create art but knew it would be wrong to do so. They couldn't create art that was about the terrible things that happened because the viewers would never understand the pain and suffering, and instead, they'd actually enjoy looking at the art. He questioned if art had the right to exist anymore due to the regression of society. He said that those who hate this new art are hateful of social realism and that they have, quote, moral terror, partly because the acts committed by the Nazis were done on a moral high ground. He advocated for new artworks that are socio-political in nature because politics had now become a part of everyday life. Art must be political. He went on to become director of the Institute for Social Research, which researched sociology and philosophy and would develop critical theory and help in the development of the Frankfurt School, which was a social theory school that enrolled neo-Marxists who were uncomfortable with capitalist, fascist, and even communist systems. They wrote about new developments influenced by none other than Karl Marx. Art informel was an umbrella term for the various art movements in Europe during and after World War II. It was a very personal style that was created to help remedy the past and cope with post-war life. The European continent was destroyed after the war, and artists were dealing with trauma and violence. This movement was a pushback of people rejecting Western heritage due to the horror of the war, and they rejected beauty as well. Most of these images were meant to look like human bodies, blood, bullet holes, wounds, and overall destruction. This art was so different than anything before. They wanted people to feel the pain of the war and understand it. Art on Formel was all about formless art and pushing people to feel these emotions. As where previous art movements had been structured, this one was all over the place, lacking structure and form. This is exactly what it would end up doing to European art, as artists who wanted to create something beautiful instead were forced to focus on the trauma of the atrocities of the war and dwell on the Holocaust forever. Art would forever change after the war, and what was once considered high art would be manipulated and shifted to fit a political agenda.